how much should I inject into my GC? Well, there's several factors to consider. So let's take a look at some chromatograms that I've prepared to figure out what those are. First, we're going to take a look at a peak that is very small. Uh, the top of it is very jagged. It's down in the noise. We can almost convince ourselves that, yeah, this is a peak, but would it be possible to integrate this accurately from injection to injection? Well, this peak is down near our limit of detection of the GC. That's called uh, LOD for short. Um, we'll touch on LOD and LOQ in a later video. The next thing that we're going to consider is a peak that is very large. Uh, and if you take a look at the beginning of the peak, it is sloped. And what we like to call that is fronting. So this is a fronting peak. Uh, I like to call it the shark fin because it's you know, it's got a very shark fin-like appearance. And what this is indicative of is an overloaded column. So there's too much sample on this column. So how do we balance not enough sample and too much sample? Well, we have to take a look at several factors. So let's see how we can get good results every single time. The first thing we're going to take a look at is our GC column. It's an expensive choice. And we have to make sure that our methods are appropriate for the columns that we have. Most people don't like to change out their GC column once they have an appropriate method. But it, say you do, this is what you can do. So typically, we use a 0 0.25 millimeter inner diameter. And that allows us to put about 50 to 100 nanograms of sample onto that column. Say we had a lot more. Well, we could go up to a megabore, a 0.53 millimeter ID, and we could put up to 2,000 nanograms of each analyte onto that column. Again, you would have to adjust your GC parameters for this, but if you have more, you can, if you have a concentrated sample, you can go up in diameter. Say you have less, you can go down in diameter. Next, we're going to look at injection volume. It's an easy change to make in the GC software, and everything else is going to stay the same. Let's take a look. So say we have one microliter injection, and that's going to put 100 nanograms of analyte onto uh, your column, so that we're going to inject just that amount. If we needed more, we could up it to two microliters, and that's going to put 200 nanograms of our analyte of interest into the column. Say that's too much. But we could just do half a microliter, and that's going to put 50 nanograms of that analyte of interest into the injection port. One thing that you do have to be careful with, though, is adding too much of your solvent. If you add too much of your solvent, you get what's called backflash. What is backflash? Well, backflash is when your vapor cloud extends beyond the pressure capabilities of your inlet liner, and some of it ends up settling out into unwanted places, in this case, into the uh, carrier gas inlet port. We don't want it there because the next time we do an injection, some of that contamination can come off and go onto the column. So how do we remedy that? Well, it's easy. You can look up online a solvent injection calculator, and you just have to enter in your solvent of choice, how much you want to inject, and your liner size, and it'll tell you, yes, that's an appropriate amount to inject. Backflash is a difficult, uh, difficult problem to solve and remedy, so we suggest avoiding it as much as possible. The next thing that we're going to discuss is split flow. Split flow, again, is an easy change in your GC method. Everything else is going to stay exactly the same. And so here we have our injection port diagram again. Like I said before, this is our carrier gas inlet. Here's our septum. Here's our septum nut. And then this would be our liner nut. Here is a cross section of our liner. This here would be the O-ring. Here would be your split port. And then down here would be the uh, where the column would reside. Say we inject with a zero to one split. Your split vent is going to be closed off by a valve inside the GC system. And what's going to happen is everything is going to go onto your column. So go back to our example of a 100 nanogram uh, analyte that we're looking for. We can put 100 nanograms directly onto the column. But 
say we did a one-to-one -one split. What we can do there is now we can put uh, 50 nanograms onto the column and the rest would go out the split vent, out to waste. Say we could increase that some more. We could do a 10 to one split. That's a very typical split. That way, uh, 10 nanograms would go on the column. Everything else would go out to our split vent. Or we could go to a 100 to one split. That way, one nanogram goes onto the column. Everything else goes out the split vent. The last thing that we're going to briefly touch on is sample concentration. So in our example, we have 100 nanograms of analyte per one microliter injection. But we can change the concentration of that by either diluting or concentrating. So if we wanted less, we could dilute. If we want more, we could concentrate. We're going to really dig into that in a later video. But uh, your GC method is going to stay exactly the same. Uh, and you can change how much of your analyte is in there based on your concentrations. So these are all just some brief guidelines that you could use to start with your injection. We recommend that you check with your institution to see if they have any other guidelines on what type of injections and how much to inject, or go to trusted literature online. Those are the best options. Please like and subscribe. Make sure to click the bell icon to receive more content from Lucidity.